Hey everyone, back again. Today I want to talk about Dasein, Heidegger's notion of Dasein, because I'm currently covering being in time week by week, and you know, it's important to have a grasp of what this term is if you want to understand being in time. So if you want more on this, tune into those episodes every Saturday that are coming out now every Saturday. Is that like going to be a part two this week? Maybe you're listening to this years in the future, in which case go find the episodes I've done on being in time. There's going to be like eight of them. So that'll be fun. You can listen to it. Maybe you have a long road trip. But yeah, here I just want to explain what Dasein is, which is an incredibly difficult term. But before jumping into it, hi, I'm David. I explain philosophical concepts and ideas and ways to make them accessible to you. So if you're new here, like, share, subscribe. You can see videos at least every single week, sometimes twice a week. If you found this on YouTube, you're going to be able to find it as just a podcast. If you want that on pretty much any podcast platform, if you found this as a podcast, you're going to be able to find the video on YouTube and you see my me if you want. <laughs> if you want to follow me anywhere than here, you can find me on all other social things or many other ones in all such. You find links in the description. If you want to help me out, like, share, subscribe, that would help me out a lot. Tell your friends. They might get a kick out of it. Or you can help me out monetarily via Patreon or PayPal, but no pressure to do that. Let us instead move on to Dasein. Now, this term come from being in time like is the core of what Heidegger is after, trying to uncover, trying to understand what it means to be, what is being, and what is its attachment to the world, because it indeed has an attachment to the world. That is, Heidegger is not interested in trying to like pursue some metaphysical, noumenal, un physical understanding of what being is before its manifestation in the world. If you read Being in Time, it's incredibly apparent that he's looking at the world as a site through which to understand what being is and how being is intimately connected to the world. So Dasein in the text really means their being, being there. What does it mean to exist there? He also uses this term to understand not just the possibility to be, that is to exist itself, but to have the very ability to comprehend that being. That is, Dasein is the being that is concerned with its own being, and this is what gives it its possibility to actually be at all. In order to go from non-being into being, there must be some driving factor here. Something must push it into being. And this is the very propensity for reflection itself, for drive to be itself. So Dasein literally means like their being, their, T-H-E-R-E, like there, over there, to exist there. But also it is that being that is concerned with its own being. And hence we find here within the term, the driving factor to its coming into existence. Now this is incredibly abstract at this point. So what I'm going to do here is provide you like the key qualities that he uncovers about Dasein. Because in the history of philosophy, he's clear, we have lost an attachment or even the ability to under to pose the question about what being is. We just kind of taken it for granted. We've just totally forgotten about it. Or, you know, other some philosophers are like, it doesn't matter. We'll never figure it out. So who cares? Heidegger is trying to revitalize that question to ask us to consider it in order not to just treat being or existing as being the be all end all, to suggest instead there, there's gotta be something more we can uncover here. So we aren't just dealing with like things in the world, not having any concern with their reason for being. And he's not trying to provide like, again, like a metaphysical, like godly justification for it, but to understand how being exists in the world and how it, it is actually able to acclimate, to adapt to the world. So they must then therefore be intertwined for, for Heidegger. Now, one of the crucial points about Dasein that motivates much of his reflection, although it is an esoteric kind of hidden point in being in time, it only comes out in like little kind of solar flares from the text. And that is, how is it that despite all of the changes we undergo, all of our experiences in our lives, all of the trauma we experience, how, like at the physical level, how all our cells are regenerating and changing. How despite that, 
we still retain our sense of self throughout our history, like through our entire lives. Through all these changes, we still retain a sense of who we are. That is, we still have the same kind of conscious attachment to ourselves in who we are, unless there's like a, you know, you suffer like a violent brain trauma and you, you can't think anymore. But like, if <laughs> barring that, you retain a sense of who you are, despite all these changes, these different phases that you go through. And you know, do it now. Think about yourself as a kid. Like, you can probably find that unifying link in your character from like when you're a kid all the way up till now, at least for, for the most part, unless you are a kid. <laughs> it's like, you might still expect to retain some of your qualities as you grow up into adulthood. So it seems as though there's something there, like at the core of our being that is, is almost universal. You know, it's something that will remain with us through our entire lives. It is the very core of who we are, our being. Now to the immediate charge that's like, oh David, you're conflating like just outward understandings of oneself and our like attachment to our emotions or our taste, like the maybe the type of music I like has remained the same, whatever. Do not think of it that way. It's not as vulgar as that. It is a much more abstract attachment to what we are and who we are, not reducible to our like taste or you know, just music we like or anything like that. No, it's, it is more abstract, yet it is also extremely concrete. I know that I'm being vague, but it's a complicated stuff. So what is this thing, this, this being that remains the same? Where does it come from? How do we, how can we actually define it? Heidegger is like, throughout the course of this text, he sort of sets out at the beginning to try and find what he calls the fundamental ontology of this being. That is the ground, the most the bedrock that makes this being possible. But he doesn't end up doing that. Instead, he provides some fundamental characteristics of this being that I think are extremely valuable in themselves, even if they aren't totally what he had sought to do from the beginning of the text, if you actually read it. And some of the characteristics of Dasein, Dasein are as follows. That is, being does not exist in isolation. Being is an isolated thing in that it is primarily concerned with itself and its own being. You come into the exi into existence alone. However, you do not continue that existence alone and that being adapts to, becomes attuned with the world around it. When you are born, you adopt a language, you adopt a community, you adopt an identity. If we were just these purely atomized, separated individuals, we wouldn't do that. We would just be out on our own, but you know, that is also not good because if any of our ancestors, any of them had been like, screw it, screw you all. I'm going out, peace, I'm gonna go live in the woods. You wouldn't be here right now. <laughs> the only reason that you're here now is because your ancestors worked together. Of course, they had feuds with other communities, like of course, but the only reason was that they did not just go and live out in the woods all on their own, not adopting a language or community or anything, because humans can't do that. I mean, we don't have fangs. We, we don't have like any, any kind of like defensive mechanisms. We need to work together in order to actually survive. So we seem to have like baked within us this propensity to adapt to, to adopt a world. Not like the world in like the sense of the earth, but a world in, in the sense of like a community that we are attached to, accustomed to, that we adopt. And so we exist in this world among other Daseins, their beings, other beings in the world, other signs, S-E-I-N, like being. So we are, you know, not only ourselves, but among others, other Daseins that we engage with in the world. And it is with them that we comprise a community. We comprise a world one that we shape through the tools that we use, through the monuments that we create, through the, I don't know, the, the, even the entertainment we all enjoy together, whatever. So we are shaped by that world, but we also shape that world, we work upon it. And this is the demonstration of both Dasein's adherence to a world, that is it's what Heidegger, Heidegger calls it's falling prey to, it submits to a world, which isn't a bad thing, but also we demonstrate our own individual will in that world. We create newness. We create great works of art and music. 
that push us into new territory. We are both those creatures, we are both those beings that adapt to and have the propensity to change that world, to add to it, to contribute to it, to help it grow together. Now this observation allows Heidegger to make essentially an a priori claim about being then. That is that it is rooted in care. When you are born into the world, when you come into the world, or a world, you adapt to it and you try to contribute to it. You exist within it, you follow its rules, you add to it, you work within it. And so we are guided by care for Heidegger. Like, and I think you can even understand this in terms of like people caring, like being kind and being benevolent with one another in that community. But in the way that he refers it to, he means it as like action, the ability to act in that world. You adopt it, you adopt its tenets, you respect those tenets and you exist within and adhere to them. And so you are caring for it and you care for others that belong within it as well. So these are some, some of the first qualities, right? Dasein is in the world and therefore it is grounded in care for Heidegger. But to exist in the world means that you are also existing in space and time. You cannot exist outside of space and outside of time. Now he's clear though, and I'm gonna do a whole episode on just this, but he's clear though that this shouldn't be confused with what Kant says, where Kant says that in order for us to have experience at all, we must have some kind of innate capacity to grapple with, to imbue the world almost with space and time that we can then experience things within. Heidegger kind of adopts that, but then he's like, actually, we don't just engage with space like this neutral thing out there or objects in the world like just these neutral things out there. In fact, to build a world means that you de-distance, you de-spatialize, you bring things close to you. Not that you are constituted in your ability to experience as a condition for your recognition as being like human. We do not need to have a kind of abstract attachment to things in the world through just the medium of space. And this is all that's necessary to understand what it means to be human. Heidegger's like, no, no, no. What actually goes on is we despatialize. We bring things close. We bring things together to form a world. However, time remains, I would say, pretty similar between Kant and Heidegger. That is, time always must exist. And time is what permits being to come into being. It is along a function of time because being comes out of non-space to then come into space in our being, in the world of physically being. But being, in order for it to go from non-space into space, exists continually within time. That is, it must have existed along a function of time in order to go from, you know, previously non-being into being to have moved in some way. Even if it doesn't move in space, it must move in time. Now, time is the horizon of our being in that we exist always within it. And it is what moves us. It doesn't just move us neutrally though, it specifically moves us to a point that we are all aware of and that is our death. Dasein is the thing that is implicitly knowledgeable about its own end. And it is by virtue of that knowledge that it is able to do anything at all. Where imagine if the opposite was the case, if there was no end. I don't think it's too, too, like too far afield or too, or too much of a far cry to say that we probably wouldn't do very much <laughs> as humans. Like we have infinite time. We would probably just sit around and do nothing. But because we know that the clock is ticking, even though the clock is a vulgar example of the temporality that he is discussing, because we know of our eventual death that we do things, time is ticking and so we know that we have to act in accordance with this eventual end. Now it is with the knowledge of this end that Dasein is able to take itself away from the everyday, the world it just kind of submits to, and embrace its own will. But that will is already, always already shaped by the everyday world in which it has fallen to, it has fallen prey to. Again, not a bad thing to say that, for Heidegger, this is absolutely necessary. But its knowledge of its own death allows it to then 
push itself into newness, into new directions, into new possibilities, to engage and to embrace its own potentiality of being. So to conclude in short, Dasein is rooted, is attached to a world that is rooted in care along the horizon or along the function of time as temporality towards its eventual death. These are kind of the key components of Dasein. You know, he wrote a 400 page book on this, so I'm being reductive, but these are kind of the key highlighting points. If you want more, start tuning into those episodes I'm releasing every week. You'll learn a lot. I hope you'll learn a lot and you can comment and we'll learn more together. But yeah, tell me what you think here. Do you buy this? Is this limited? Does this add to your understanding of your life, the world or anything like that? Maybe it doesn't, in which case still let me know. I'd love to hear what you think. Uh, and yeah, if you like what I did, like, share, subscribe. And on that note, take care.